everyone you know is gonna hire you when you're beginning. So it's like just everyone in your life. And it's gonna be so easy to just be like, oh, I know that person. Or, oh, they don't have a lot of money. Or whatever, and you just like make up a price. Which is why I'm glad we're here today, because I wanna give you the tools where if you're making up a price on the spot, you have like an agenda behind it and math behind it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work out what your like real rate is for every job, and it should apply to anything. So we've got weddings, portraits, and that includes seniors, corporate or commercial, and that includes bands. Do you know why I put com bands under com commercial? Why? I'm asking you. Because they're, they're making money off of your work? Anybody who's making money off of your work, it's a commercial job. It's so easy. This is the, the first thing like that's really important mentally to get past is everyone you know is going to hire you when you're be beginning and so it's like just everyone in your life and it's going to be so easy to just be like oh i know that person or oh they don't have a lot of money or whatever and you just like make up a price the only thing i'll say about commercial stuff if someone else is making money off of your work charge extra and sure sh sure shit don't give out any discounts <laughs> So and that goes for bands. Bands are notorious for not having any money and not paying photographers and not wanting to pay photographers, but they're also notorious, ironically, on never giving photo credit. And they'll spend four grand on a new amp or a new guitar without even thinking. Mm -hmm. So and that stuff doesn't actually ever get them any further in their career. Having a better guitar uh, generally isn't gonna help if they suck or whatever. Like, but good photography can catapult their career. So it's those mental b shifts that any new photographer, any new small business owner, artist needs to like really get through is thinking that through for them even. Because you'll be told all day long, like even uh, commercials, commercial businesses who do like an, a holiday party, they're already spending a ton of money to like rent a hotel or a ballroom and food and catering. And they're gonna be like, oh, we don't have a lot of big budget for photography, but you, how much are you spending on feeding all your employees for that one party? Like, how much is the bar tab, <laughs> you know? Like, and, and why are your photos of it less important right. than catering and whatever, you know? So that's huge, is to think about that stuff. Because if you're giving it to them for free, you just have to think about it as you're donating your services to them. Right. And are they worth it? So I'll get off of that now because that, that can be a whole other video. Uh, the only caveat to that is um, nonprofits, but but even with nonprofits, some nonprofits bring in they have like a ten million dollar budget every year, you know, like think about the Red Cross or whatever. So pick if somebody approaches you and they want basically free photography. And in my mind, any in my mind as a professional photographer, anything under five hundred dollars is free. So anybody that ever comes to me and they want to pay me less than $500, and I don't care whether it's a wedding, a portrait, or commercial, under $500 to me is I'm donating my services. <laughs> so if it's a nonprofit, I pick who I want to work with that I believe in. And maybe I'll limit one or two a year that even I'll do that for. That way, every person that comes to you, you don't say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the one caveat to that is if you want to get into weddings, which is a huge high pressure event situation with like crazy lighting and you need to learn flash and posing and all this stuff, donating to a nonprofit for their events is a great way to learn and I'd much rather people start there than doing weddings for cheap or for free or even assisting because you can learn your gear faster if you're in the field and there's no pressure for it to being a uh, nonprofit or event. That's like the, the mental blocks of sales in a Cliff Notes version. <laughs> so now what we wanna do is actually work on the math, okay? And math is everything. Math gets you through all that stuff. So there's two numbers that every photographer needs to run for themselves. These are all the same in my mind, once you get going. There's a little bit of difference on how you get your numbers out of these, and, and those are different videos, but all of these in my mind, if you've done your math, are the same. You've got two things to worry about. You have your cost of doing business. Cost of doing business. And then you have your COGS, which is cost of goods sold. 
So cost of doing business is your overhead. Cost of goods sold is the cost of item. Do you have any idea what goes into your cost of doing your business? Uh, your gear? Yes. Transportation? Maybe? Your life? That gets into uh, more of profit okay. and income, but yes, you d I mean you kind of want to do, but insurance? Mm. And you might not have that yet as a beginner, but eventually you're going to need liability insurance, insurance for your gear. Once you start actually investing in gear, it's like you really need that. Uh, plus my like health insurance comes out of it, my 401k. I'm an employee, so employee, you are the only employee, but you still wanna account for your employee expenses so that it doesn't come out of your income. Uh, health, auto insurance, gear insurance, all the different insurances, but, so I've got my health insurance, auto insurance, um, 401k, and yes, as a self-employed person, you can have a 401k. I highly recommend you set one up immediately and just start pushing anything in it, just to have it in the routine. One of the things with that people do wrong with the profit is anytime that you have a great year or an awesome month where you have like 10 grand coming in in one month, it's like, great, I can buy a new camera. No, you need to put that profit in your 401k <laughs> or some long-term thing for yourself. Um, and, and at the end of today, I'll show you how to budget for gear upgrades because that's part of running a business. Um, so it's not only gear you have and want to buy, but computers too, mm -hmm. right? That's right. also gear. What else goes with your computer? External hard drives. Yep, yeah, hard drives. Oh, um, like software. Yeah. So you have to budget for that, right? So you've got Adobe, Photoshop, you know, Photoshop. You've got website expenses. Mm -hmm. So do you see how quickly this works out? People just make up prices and they start there. Like, oh, somebody asked me for to shoot a band photo and they don't have a lot of money, so I'll do it for a hundred bucks. Like that's the normal per person's reaction. But out of that hundred dollars, you have to pay for all of this, plus your paycheck, which is not a hundred dollars, plus you didn't, take into this, we haven't even gotten into our cogs yet. Okay, so $500 wedding, or a $100 band gig, or a $100 family photo, how are you supposed to like, not only do these from the first, the outset, like maybe, you, maybe you're using your current job to fund your new business, but what if your jobs actually funded the new business? That's, trouble. right? So if you stop having your job fund your new business, it forces you to do good rates, proper pricing, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what's fun about today, and this is why I'm so glad to, that I can help you. Because now, so for example, if you're not paying your own uh, health insurance because you're on someone else's health insurance, I still want you to run your numbers as if you're paying for it. So figure out how much they're paying you, paying. Maybe it's your job that's covering it. So for you personally, your job has health insurance, correct? I'm on my dad's. Oh, you're on your dad's. Mm -hmm. Do you know what he's paying? I don't. So he's probably on a family plan and you're just part of that plan. Yeah. If it was, I guess the reason I was asking about the job, so with a, with you're working for a company and you get health insurance from your company, they're actually paying half. So you're paying like $100 a month or a paycheck and they're paying $100 a paycheck. Mm -hmm. When you're self-employed, you have to pay both parts of that. Right, okay. okay. So the other thing that goes into all of this, which is the big elephant in the room, is taxes, okay? Taxes are huge. So not only with the health insurance, you're paying twice for the health insurance. You're paying as the employer and as the employee. So I don't have anyone matching that. And the same thing goes with your 401k. You are the employer and you are the employee. So everything, you don't have anyone giving you any money for that, mm. okay? So you can't base it off of what, I guess my point is you can't base it on what you're putting in from your, out of your normal paycheck. And the reason I'm bringing this up with taxes, it's, it's worse because of taxes. <laughs> so with taxes, I don't care how much money you make on your side hustle, when you stop working for a company, a different, like having a different job, 
straight off the top of your gross sales, you're losing 15%. Straight off the top. I don't care if you take home five grand or you take a loss, you can't write off your way out of this. You're getting self-employment tax off the top. So straight off the top is 15%. And then whatever, so your tax guy takes all this stuff we just talked about and you deduct it from your taxes, which actually might change because of the tax bill going through the Senate right now. But you can deduct all this stuff from your gross sales. So let's say your gross sales is $10,000 a year, just starting. You want to take 15% off of that and that's going right to the government. And then you can deduct all of the expenses, your cost of doing business, okay? And then what's left over is profit, sort of. I mean, we still haven't talked about cost of goods yet. There's, that's another thing, but that's still part of what comes out of your taxes. Mm -hmm. So your profit income also gets taxed again. Right. And that, that tax rate varies depending on how much money you bring in a year. Right. And that can vary year to year. So for example, when you get to a point where you're finally bringing in or taking home like 40 grand a year, there's like 37,500 and you can get one tax rate, but if you make $1 over that, you're in, the you're in the next tax bracket. And that's kind of a low, easy rate to hit. So I actually keep track of where I am in my tax bracket all year long because that's where you spend more on gear or do something to bring down your actual income. Put something in your 401k to bring you down and to keep you in the lower tax bracket. So there's things like you can that, do with that with like a financial planner and an accountant can help you with that. Okay. Now I highly recommend everybody just get a financial planner and an accountant like ASAP because they'll help you with all of this stuff. But um, I'll probably do a different video just on taxes because I find that part fascinating. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the reasons I find it fascinating is because you can buy gear and you can put it in 401k and you can put it in a HSA to like squirrel the money away to keep you out of the higher tax brackets, but you're still paying yourself. Yeah. Right? So if I have a good year, it's like December, it's like five grand in my 401k or whatever I can spare, buy a furnace, like buy a new camera, buy something that you can write off. And again, that might all change. Okay, so this is the big thing people don't budget for. So out of that $100 already, we've lost everything. Yeah. So you're not taking home $100. Like, that's not your money. That's not, I mean, I get the instinct when you have a f regular job paying for your rent and stuff. Like, that's like, oh, it's just a hundred extra $100 and I wasn't doing it anyway. But when you consider all this other crap, it's not actually $100. So by the end of today, I want you to understand how that works. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense so far? Yes, it does.